Okay, good evening everyone live from Dubai. It's Phil Pendlebury here. I hope you're having a super mega large day. And for those of you joining us from the Middle East, of course, Assalamu Alaikum, Mahaba. Good to have you with us too. Right, so here we are on another stream. Hopefully going to keep this nice and short. I've got a few examples set up. We're looking at some post-production tricks or tips uh, using Spectralayers 10. Um, Spectralayers, the Photoshop for audio. There's been so many questions sent in and I've been scanning around as well for some examples. So I've prepared a few things to answer a few questions. We're going to have a look at some standalone work in uh, Spectral Layers itself and then show you how it works again in ARA or ARA 2 mode inside Nuendo 12. So I think that's all we need to say at the moment. Let's go and have a look and uh, see what I've got set up. So I've got Spectral Layers 10 up and running. As you can see, we're nicely zoomed in. I know I've got my camera on at the moment. We'll get that off in a second because I just wanted to remind you. Um, headphones on probably for this one. Uh, there will be some things that you know may be a little difficult to hear if you're just listening on speakers in the background kind of thing, uh, because some of the things that we're going to be doing, um, you know, involve quite a bit of detail. So we'll get the headphones on, and um, let's hop over and quickly a quick recap on a couple of the things uh, related to spectral layers itself. I am going to remove the camera right now. So I've got a file open, we'll get to that in a minute. I just want to quickly show you a couple of things that we've skipped over in the past. So first of all, Spectral Layers works with layers. So when, we, when we're messing around with files, when we're you know, removing noises or doing certain treatments, we end up with various layers and they end up down here. At the moment you can see there's only one layer because that's the main layer that the file is. Will you wiverance? Um, the other thing that you might be interested to see is there's lots of options on the display here. Um, I need to move that over a little bit, don't I, so that you can see it just briefly. There we go, you can see a bit of my desktop as well. We've got lots of options here. I like to just have them all switched on, but you can, of course, disable some of them. Most of them are for viewing purposes, uh, which we'll get to in a while. The only one really that's quite important is the FFT size, which is here. And that, although you can see it has an effect on the display, it also has an effect on the way that Spectral Layers works, on the amount of things that it picks up and so on. Uh, the others are mainly just visual. Min amplitude and max amplitude, that's showing you what you can actually see there on the screen and so on. So anyway, without further ado, let's just get into the first example. Like I said, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. You'll also notice when we get into um, ARA mode that these are collapsed by default. Um, so I'll show you how to open those up, hopefully if I remember when we get into ARA mode. Right, let's have a listen to this first um, example that I've got and see how we get on. So what we've got here is a little bit of dialogue. Let's have a listen. Will your wiverance? That's really wonderful to hear. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Okay, and we'll just play that one more time. Will your wiverance? That's really wonderful to hear. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Right, so this is why I kind of recommended that we put headphones on for this because this might, you know, seem a little bit subtle uh, when you're listening on speakers. But there's three issues with that, and this was something that was sent in by a user. Um, we have, it's... It's really wonderful to hear. I feel you can hear there, there's a bit of a noise. That's, I think, was somebody, you know, tapping the mic. To hear. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're spare. And there's what sounds like a door closing there. To hear. I feel absolutely... And there's a very nasty P on the absolutely. Absolutely. Ab 
absolutely I feel ab I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing So how do we clean that up so that we've just got the voice? We don't need anything else from that. Well, you probably noticed that the first noise here is in between audio. Here. I feel absolutely So actually that would not be too tricky. Here. Let's go back and find it again. Will your weverence? That's weird. Let's just zoom out a bit. Will your weverence? That's really wonderful to hear. I've that one wouldn't be too tricky because of the fact that it's actually in between the audio. I'm using the mouse wheel, by the way, to scroll in and out here. So what I'm going to do first is just show you what happens when we change the FFT or the Fast Fourier Transform, I believe that stands for. You can see that everything gets a bit blurry, but that does also affect what you select and so on and the end result. So I'm going to try and sharpen it up a little bit so I can see that. And then I'm, I'm actually going to try with the um, magic wand tool here and see if we can just select that noise. See, we've got everything around it. And then all we do is hit delete. And you can hit delete, you can set the delete to um, only, you know, effect to a certain amount rather than the full amount. So you can see here, the folder here. I've there's still a little bit of noise there. So what we can do is go back and got, we've got the undo area here, the history. We can go back to that. We can hit delete and then again, the folder here. I've and once again, a little bit of magic wand over that area there. Magic wand's really clever. Always the first thing to try unless you know, you know, that there's something else you might be looking for, which we'll get to later. Folder here. I feel we've pretty much got rid of it. However, folder here. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're that one is right underneath the audio, isn't it? Sodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Which, you know, would be impossible to remove by just deleting or chopping the file or doing whatever. So let's go back to the start, the raw file as it were. Absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Will your weverence. That's really wonderful to hear. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're... Okay. So my first port of call to this would be our ever faithful, and we're going to use this. Um, we're going to use this a lot today in various ways, um, is the Unmix Noisy Speech, uh, because it's AI powered, very, very fast, and very accurate. I mean, it's AI, so what, what it is, is basically a massive library of different voices and so on and so forth, which helps spectral layers recognize what is a voice and what isn't. Okay, camera back off. So let's just give that a quick go. Unmix noisy speech. Okay, see how quick that was. So you can see now that we've got two layers. Remember I was talking about layers earlier on? Well, there's the layers. So if we, for instance, just solo the noise or what, what spectral layers thinks is noise. So that's pretty good, except for there's one little part there that is actually voice. And maybe, you know, to the, to the AI, that doesn't actually sound like a voice. So if we play the speech only, let's have a listen. Will, your weverence, that's really wonderful to hear. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Interesting, because you can barely tell but just seeing as we're going into detail, what I want to do is just go another little step further with this and see if we can put this part here, 
the app. Apps. That apps. you can see that the plosive P apps. is quite obvious there, and we don't want that in. But I would like to get that apps. back into the file somehow. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to keep us on the noise layer, and I'm going to make sure that that layer is selected. And this is important. You'll see in a moment why. And once again, I'm going to reach for our magic, magic wand tool, and just kind of select. Yeah, no, let's try that again. So we'll go back here and we zoom in. Just want to get those that bit there. That's it. Perfect. So, and there's, there's various ways you could have done this. You could have just selected it with a brush, but I do like using Magic Wand. As you can see, it kind of adapts to what's going on around it. There's also various shortcut keys you can use to, like, for instance, shift and select and so on. I just prefer to just drag around and see what happens. So let's have a listen. That's the bit we want. Okay. So... That is now, how do we get that back into the file? And here's a nice trick that I haven't showed you before. So we're basically going to go up to Edit, and we're going to say Copy. And then we're going to say Paste. A new layer. We could do paste and mix, but we had no control over it then. So we're going to paste that to a new layer. And there it is, right at the bottom of the screen. I hope you can see that. And I'm going to just name that absolute. So now we disable the noise and listen there. You can see we've got our app. And now if we go back to speech and open that up along with that new layer. The folder here. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. The folder here. And there you have it. So the end result. Let's have a listen to the end result. Will, your reverence. That's really wonderful to hear. I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're sparing me. Will Clean as a whistle. Um, we could probably have done some EQ on that to make it, you know, a little bit more accurate. And don't forget, if you felt that that absolutely was too high... I feel absolutely wapsodic about the fact that you're... You do have control over levels here. And even the background noise, if, you know, rather than just removing it altogether... Will, your reverence. That's really wonderful to hear. I feel absolutely wapsodic. But in this case... I think the best result comes from just doing exactly what I did. And I can't really imagine that being much, you know, better a result or indeed much simpler. Um, obviously, I'm going through the process slowly here. We're on a live stream. Uh, we could condense all that, you know, into 15 seconds. Do this, do this, do this, do this. But I don't want to do that. I want to show you the process and I want to show you also a little bit of me uh, fiddling about and getting things right rather than just cutting it out just so that you know how it works. So let's move on. So let's open our next example. And oh, of course, yeah, actually, before we do that, <laughs> um, let, yeah, we just imagine that we've done everything that we've just done. Of course, you can then go over to file and you can say export of the active layer or all layers. And normally it would probably be all layers, um, even because if you've adjusted the volume levels and so on. Right, let's move on to our next one, which is this one. Hopefully this works. And let's have a quick listen. Tracy? Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future. Okay, now that's obviously me talking and... Tracy, please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future. 
So I hope you can hear this clearly. Like I said, I'm sure with, with headphones on, you probably can. Um, and what we've got is clicks. And that one, once again, is out in the open. But there are others. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning that are underneath the audio. So what happens if we do unmix noisy speech on this? Let's have a go. Tracy, please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future? Tracy? Actually, that does a very good job. But there's still a little artifact to allow any bludgeon there. And again, we could use a magic wand. We could maybe just select that and delete it. But I want to show you another process, um, and which could be clicks, it could be, you know, something else, it could be birds, it could be various things. And of course, if the source isn't out in the open, like this one. So, first of all, again, don't forget that the FFT size is important on this. So if you can see that as I sharpen this up, we can also kind of see it if we move the 3D display. And if I just use magic wand there, I think that'll pretty much give us the click. But I'm going to set that back to how it was. And we'll do that here. There we go. So we're back to, to 2D again. So have a quick listen to that click. And I think I've got the FFT pretty much, you know, how, how I want it this one and don't forget the other controls of visualizing only okay so let's do unmix components i'm going to leave this at non-destructive went into that in a previous stream if you want to find out a bit more about that let's have a listen to what happens with unmix components so we've got three components here we've got tonal Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future. Which obviously is mainly the tonal parts of the voice, but it's not enough. Uh, then we've got noise. Please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in Okay. And then we've got the transients. And that's the target layer for us this time. Because... That layer contains the transients of the voice as well as the clicks. So let's just have a, another quick listen to that. And because we're already in transient mode, we could use a transient tool, but I'm not going to hear. I just want to show you something else really quickly. Um, I've got the FFT size set so that it's quite sharp. I don't want it too blurry, so let's sharpen it up as much as not as much as we can, but quite a lot. And we'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to use the standard select tool to select that first click, like this. So I've selected it a little bit outside of it as well. And I don't know if you can hear that while I'm pressing the key at the same time. So the next thing is we go to select and select similar. And this is really useful. What you can do is tell spectral layers to select other areas that are similar to the one we've got selected. Now, if you move this fader up here, this slider up to 100%, it's going to be looking for the exact matches. If you move it down to zero, it's going to be much more flexible. I found that about 60% usually does the trick. I don't want to sample all layers. I only want the active layer, so I'm turning that off, but everything else I will leave on. And then we select all. And you can see that what's happened now is all those clicks have been selected. Even the little one that, you know, was a little bit ambiguous earlier on. So now, of course, all that remains is for me to use the fabulous delete key 
and hopefully we've eliminated the clicks. And don't forget that some of those were behind the dialogue. So now we can bring Transient back into the picture and listen to the whole thing. Tracy, please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future? That is absolutely seamless. I mean, <laughs> actually, if you look here, it's quite funny, isn't it? It looks like some writing there. That's obviously just pure coincidence. B.S. it looks like, doesn't it? Um, you know, unmixed noisy speech often does the trick, but there were a couple of little things there. So let's just quickly go back to the original file. Tracy, please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gas. And now the final result. Tracy, please can you take a note not to allow any bludgeoning or killing of gardeners in future? Awesome. Tracy. Whoops. Okay, that's enough of me. Uh, let's move on to our next little section. The next section which will involve a file innuendo. And just quickly before I close down uh, spectral layers here, obviously We've got that final thing there. We've done all our adjustments. You could have even adjusted some of the volume levels and so on. And all we do then is we go up to File and Export Audio of Project or Export Audio of Active Layer if you only wanted one layer. Or we could do all layers and you'll then get separate files. Um, so yeah, there's no need to, to go into that into detail. I think it's all pretty obvious. Right, so let's move into Nuendo for the next treatment. Closing that down, no need to save, and here we are in Nuendo. This is Nuendo 12. I've got a, a blank project here that's got absolutely nothing in it, and just some empty audio tracks. So what I'm going to do here is just drag in this file, so you can see the file. Let's just expand it a bit. In fact, quite a lot, and we'll give it a bit of a nicer colour, so you can see it clearly. Uh, don't worry, we're going to zoom in when we get into the you know important stuff. Um, so let's have a quick listen. Prima della guerra o dopo la guerra civile, anche prima della guerra era uh, la, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto molto ben diversa, gestita in modo uh, diverso da so this was um, somebody being interviewed in Spanish, basically, and you can hear there's a few issues with that. He's not an actor, so that's fine. Um, but there's some things that we could do to, you know, improve the quality of that. So camera off. And what first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of this, a lot of the files, so we're not having to go through it all every time. I'll set the locators around it. And uh, the first thing you might think is, well, we should probably get rid of uh, some of the errors and all those things. Uh, however, in this case, I'm not going to do that because that would uh, be synced with video. So, okay. So what I am going to do is just quickly lower the level of this second section where he gets a little bit noisy. So I'll just use the split tool for the time being to do that round about here, I guess. I'll just turn snap off and we'll just drop the level down a little bit. So it kind of looks about the same. We could go further with this, but the whole point is to get into spectral layers now as quickly as possible. So a quick listen to make sure that doesn't sound ridiculous. Prima della guerra era, uh, la, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto, molto ben diversa, gestita in modo... Okay. And you should be able to see that quite clearly, I think. So I'm now just going to bounce that. So we'll make sure that both, uh, both the parts are selected. I'm going to do my bounce here. And there we have an audio part created from the previous one. Quick listen again. Prima della guerra o dopo la guerra civile, anche prima della guerra era... Uh, 
la, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto, molto ben diversa, gestita in modo... Ok. So, the big issue for me with this is the ambience that's going on, the room ambience, especially where he starts talking a bit louder out here. La fase economica era diversa, molto, molto ben diversa. So, let's see what spectral layers can make of this. So, we've got the part selected. We're going to go up to the audio menu. We're going to go to extensions and spectral layers. And spectral layers should open up now. Let's just make sure it's nice and central. Now we can zoom in. And you should be able to see that quite clearly. Now, this is something I mentioned earlier. Remember I was saying about these, the display has a default way of, of, of displaying uh, when you're in ARA mode. Um, so what we do is we need to go to standard layout there so you can see the volumes and in fact any of the other things you can also set. Uh, they're all set up but the layers standard layout. Make sure you do that otherwise you'll end up without the volumes controls. So, here we are. Prima della guerra. Oh, Don't forget, we're inside Nuendo now, and Spectral Layers is in ARA mode, which means that we can use all the controls Dopo la guerra civile, anche prima della guerra era... that we use normally to operate Nuendo or Cubase. So, let's see what uh, Spectral Layers can make la fa la fase economica era diversa mo of that. We're going to go to Process, Reverb Reduction. And we're going to let, set the rate at around 80% and apply. That looks like it did quite a lot. So let's have a listen. Prima della guerra o dopo la guerra civile, anche prima della guerra era... Uh, la, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto, molto ben diversa, gestita in modo... That's pretty amazing. Um, you might have got used to it. Prima della guerra... But have a listen to how it was, especially this bit here. La, fa la fase... This is how it was. La, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto, molto ben diversa, gestita in modo... You can hear the sound of the room and everything. And, and what we did was this, uh, a pretty extreme setting. La, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto, molto ben diversa, gestita in modo... And there's very, very few, if not any, artifacts there, which I think that's actually really impressive. So what can we do to try and make that a little bit tighter? Okay, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to close spectral layers. We'll keep that part selected and... We'll do it in stages. So I'm going to go to Extensions, Make Permanent. So that's now burned into that file. Prima della guerra o dopo la guerra civile, anche prima della guerra era uh, uh, la, fa la fase economica. That's the file itself and that's how it looks. So what I'm going to do now is pull in my file from earlier on, which I think it's this one. Let's just check. No idea they were in here. I'm going. So imagine if this was me in the room and then it went over to this guy talking. I mean, this, this is an example. Uh, I had no idea they were in here. I'm going to have a quick word with my secretary. Just give me a second. Hello? So listen to the difference. La fase economica era diversa, molto, molto ben diversa, gestita in modo. So all I'm going to do here is select that file. We're not going to play it anymore. We're going to play it again in a minute. We're going to go to extension spectral layers. I have no idea. And what I'm going to do is select no some of the part. And I'm going to do to go to process EQ match. and register EQ. So that's now taken the EQ from my voice. And then we'll go back to the original
and there he is. And now what we can do is just select all that and hit apply and have a listen. Prima della guerra. Turn mine off. Anche prima della guerra era uh, la, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto molto ben diversa, gestita in modo prima della guerra o dopo la guerra civile. Anche prima della guerra era uh, la, fa la fase economica era diversa, molto molto ben diversa, gestita in modo prima della guerra o dopo la guerra civile. Anche prima della guerra economica era diversa. So you can hear there that it's basically replicated the EQ of my original file. So, quite impressive. Uh, I mean, we could have gone into more detail with that. Okay, we've got a couple more examples. What we'll do is we'll keep the screen zoomed out here for a second. We'll just get rid of those. Um, yeah, we're all cool. We're all cool. We're just going to use the same, the same kind of process here. So if we go back into zoom mode, camera off. So what we do here, we'll go back to regular spectral layers. So this is not the ARA version now. So I'm just going to show you that, you know, you can deal with both at the same time. So I've got a file here. Uh, I think this is the one footsteps. Yeah, have a quick listen. For many years, we have successfully managed and grown our business in the middle, working closely with our local partners from our offices in Amsterdam. Okay. So, um, this was a question that was sent in actually just yesterday. And basically what it is, it's a voice with a room tone and the cameraman's footsteps were audible. So can spectral layers or something like it deal with that? And yes, indeed it can. Um, just quickly about room tone. I know you're probably aware of this, but you'll notice that there's quite a bit at the beginning and the end of this file. It's always a good idea to capture room tone. Just an open mic before anybody starts speaking and try and you know catch a good few seconds of it if you can. Um, you'd be surprised how much difference it makes to have it there and to be able to move it around and do stuff with it later. Um, I'm a big fan of The Office, uh, the US version with Steve Carell and so on. Although I'm British, I do love the original, but I, I love Steve Carell and all his work and all those guys are just amazing. And there, there's something I caught just the other day, and I always talk about room tone, but I caught this the other day. And they're talking away and doing what they do. And then at one point, Steve, I think it was Steve, takes off his mic because they have lab mics on all the time, takes off his mic, switches it off, and all of a sudden, wow, you don't notice that the room tone's been there all the time and you don't notice it until it's gone. So it really makes a big difference. Okay, camera back off. We're zoomed in. Let's have a listen to this once more time. So there's the footsteps. You can hear the room tone underneath. And the voice is coming in. For many years, we have successfully managed... And so the first thing I'm going to do is the old favourite of unmix noisy speech. Hopefully it'll deal with that quite well. Let's have a listen. Yes, indeed. There's the footsteps. And you can still hear the room tone. There's the other footsteps. I hope this is all clear. So we basically, we've successfully got rid of what we wanted to get rid of. There's the speech, by the way, if you want to hear that on its own. Middle East and Africa region. Working closely with our... There is a couple of footsteps there at the beginning, which were kind of semi-picked up. So this is something I haven't showed you before. What we're going to do now... Uh, I'll need to zoom out so you can see the whole screen. And what we're going to do is simply drag those two files separately into Nuendo. One and two. And 
we can just minimize uh, spectral layers and have a listen to the whole thing in Nuendo. For many years, we have success. So, the beauty of this whole scenario, we could have done this in our mode as well. But the beauty of this whole scenario, of course, is we've got, okay, we've got a couple of stray footsteps there. We could have probably worked on that later. But there's no room tone. It's all in that file. We managed and grown up. So, what we do, first of all, we'll just turn snap off and we'll kind of isolate that vocal or that voice. Then we'll go to the file underneath, which has got the room tone and the noise. Let's see. And we'll find a part of that. Let's say... Round about there to there. We don't want the rest of it because it's got footsteps. And then we can literally just select the other parts, get rid of them. And what I would do here, there's a number of things you could do, but just as we're going to do this quickly. So we've got two separate tracks now. I've duplicated the part that I wanted. I'm going to crossfade those. We can check the crossfade setting, which hopefully you can see. Uh, we'll leave it as it is. I mean, you're getting the idea here, I think. We now have control. Okay, the crossfades weren't the correct one, but never mind. Uh, we now have control over that room tone. For many years, we have successfully managed and grown our business in the Middle East and Africa region working closely with our local partners from our offices in Amsterdam. Separately from the voice, which is stunning. Right, one more thing that I'm going to show you, and I think we'll do it in a... Um, we'll do it in a similar method to what we just done. I quite like the dragging, um, the dragging of files into Nuendo from, from spectral layers. Um, Aura has its plus points, of course, uh, but I quite like the dragging in thing. Um, so let's get rid of everything here. And just double check that we haven't got any, any extensions still attached there from, for some reason. So I'm going to select all that. So. Back to spectral layers itself. We can put this back in the center. I can zoom in and close this file. And we've got one more file, and this is the final one for today. Thank you, looking good. Yeah, 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 you're looking good down there. Thank you very much indeed. This is free and come together in the morning. Okay, so similar thing. We've got um, a voice, which is obviously an overdub. Uh, with the crowd noise underneath, but it's been sent like that. Thank you, looking good, yeah, 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 you're looking good down there, thank you very much indeed, this is... Now again, you know, what you could do here, I suppose, is go back and say, well, can you send me those uh, separate files, at least I can deal with it, but here's what I would do. So again, it's our old favourite, unmixed noisy speech, let's see what it makes of that. Looks all right, let's have a listen. Thank you, looking good, yeah, 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 you're looking good down there, thank you very much indeed, this is free and come together in the morning. Okay, so that's a rough job. Once again, we're going to take both of those layers, pull them in. I don't know why, it always pulls them into slightly the wrong place, it doesn't matter. It seems to be pulling them in, ah, it'll be because I've got my uh, project start points all set differently. So let's just put those roughly actually in place. And once again, now we've got the whole thing in Nuendo. 
Thank you, looking good. Yeah, 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 you're looking good down there. Thank you very much indeed. This is free and come together in the morning. So all I wanted to do was just make that sound a little bit more realistic. And how you would do that, well, add an instance of reverence to that um, voice channel. Actually, the default LA studio is not bad, but maybe we could perhaps pick something uh, exhibition hall. That's right. Of course, we don't want a uh, hundred percent wet signal. Uh, Thank you. Looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking good down there. Thank you very much indeed. This is free and come together in the morning. So, although that didn't perfectly, you know, if you listen to it on its own without reverence. Yeah, yeah, you're looking good down there, thank you. There's a few little bits of crowd that have bled through. We could have got rid of those in other ways, and there's a few little bits of, you know, artefacts. But once you do what I've just done... Thank you, looking good, yeah, 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 you're looking good down there, thank you very much indeed. This is free and come together at the moment. Probably still a bit much. We could have changed a bit of EQ on the mic, and then what I would probably do would be to just copy that reverence over as well to the crowd noise, but then we don't need anywhere near as much ambience. Thank you, looking good, yeah, 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 you're looking good down there, thank you very much indeed. This is free and come together in the morning. So there you go. That was interesting, and yeah, let's go back to our camera. Hope you guys are still doing okay. Thanks uh, to those of you that have been with us, and of course, once again, a big thanks to Terry for the chat moderation. Uh, don't forget, you know the routine. Any questions, anything that I've missed, um, comments, 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 I'll do my best to answer everything that I possibly can. Uh, I haven't missed one yet, so fingers crossed, let's keep that record going. Thanks ever so much, guys. I will see you towards the end of November. All right, have a great night, or a great morning, or a great day. Super mega large. Cheers for now.